we're getting a divorce. You stole the money I gave you every month instead of sending it to my mom. With his face turning red, Lucas came home and immediately grabbed me by the collar. I felt something burst inside me in response to his baseless accusations. Fine, let's get a divorce then. I pulled his hand away, grabbed my things, and left the house. I could hear Lucas's loud voice behind me, but it no longer mattered to me. My name is Olivia. It had been three years since Lucas and I got married. Time flies so fast. I was turning 30 this year. I continued working as an illustrator for a company, and around the age of 25, I started hoping for marriage as I saw many of my friends getting hitched. However, for someone who had always been focused on her career like me, dating seemed distant. I had even forgotten how to meet new people. So, I decided to quickly join a dating event. Most of the dating events with age and income requirements didn't lead to serious relationships, but I met Lucas at one of these events I had decided would be my last. Lucas seemed like a genuine person, and it was clear from a few dates that he was a gentleman. He was the embodiment of what society considers a good man. So when he asked me to start a relationship with marriage in mind and later proposed, I didn't hesitate to say yes. For a while after getting married, we lived happily. We lived away from the in-laws and barely had any interaction with them. I knew his mother didn't like me from her cold attitude when I met her as his future wife, which made living separately from her a preferable situation. The decision to live separately from them came from Lucas, who had expressed a desire to live just the two of us for a while after getting married. His mother was against the idea of us living separately from them, but Lucas managed to convince her and we successfully rented an apartment about a 10-minute drive from his parents' house. Life with Lucas was peaceful, and he often offered to help with the household chores, making our lives together quite comfortable. However, about a year into our marriage, Lucas's father suddenly passed away in a traffic accident that happened when he was going to work, and Lucas was still getting ready for work when we got the call from his mother. By the time we got to the hospital, his father had already passed away, leaving his mother crying loudly in the room we were directed to. During the hectic funeral preparations and attending to the mornings, his mother was engulfed in grief, and I had to handle everything by myself. After the funeral, she was busy dealing with the other party involved in the accident and insurance paperwork. Once everything was settled, a significant amount of money was transferred into his mother's account. Also, Lucas had said she'll be fine on her own, so we didn't move in with his mother, and she began living alone in the family home. After a while, it seemed my mother-in-law managed to live on her own, but about a year later, she contacted Lucas asking for financial help. She had so much money, though, I thought. But Lucas didn't refuse to help her. Mom must be lonely since Dad passed. Maybe she's going on trips with friends, he said, and promised to give her $900 every month. Around that time, Lucas got transferred to a different department and became very busy, coming home only to sleep. Because of this, I ended up delivering the money to his mother directly every month. I thought transferring the money would be fine, but Lucas said, I'm worried about mom being alone, so I want you to go give her the money in person and check on her. I couldn't refuse. Lucas would give me the money the morning after payday, and I would go to his mother's house that day to hand it over. I feel bad delivering it every month. Oh, since you're here, could you help me weed the garden? I'm getting old, so I can't squat for a long time. Just a little help would be great, she would ask me every month. It was always just a little, but I ended up doing everything from start to finish, only being freed in the evening or at night. Meanwhile, she would just sit on the sofa in the living room, drinking coffee and watching talk shows. The first time I brought the money over, I saw my mother-in-law relaxing and asked her, aren't you going to help out? She looked at me in shock, clicked her tongue, and responded, why should I do it? I always do everything by myself. You could at least help me when you come over. Such an inconsiderate daughter-in-law. Then she turned back to the TV, as if to say there's nothing more to talk about, and laughed heartily at the program. From that day on, 
whenever I visited, she always found some chore for me, making me feel like her servant. I was tasked with everything from weeding to pruning trees, washing cars, doing laundry, and cleaning. Regarding the laundry, even though she had a brand new washer with a dryer, she complained, lifting the clothes must hurt my back, right? My mother-in-law works part-time but is just as overbearing there, and Iris, a friend who works at the same supermarket, once sent me a message asking, are you okay being with her? I couldn't complain about my mother-in-law, so I just laughed it off. A year after we restarted financial support, my mother-in-law began asking for more money, this time directly to me. You know, I live alone, I have my part-time job and my pension, but at my age, there are always things I need. I was honestly irritated as she talked to me like it was casual chit-chat while I was wiping the living room floor, but I said the complete opposite, I'll ask Lucas when I get home. I'm not sure about the amount, though. Then my mother-in-law turned to me, glared, and raised her voice, what do you mean, you don't know the amount? Aren't you the one managing the finances at home? If you can't support me, it means you're using the money for yourself, doesn't it, you stupid daughter-in-law? She thought I managed our finances, but in reality, I didn't. Lucas gave me the money for her support along with his own living expenses, from which I paid our rent, utilities, and credit card bills. So, in fact, Lucas was the one managing our finances, but it seemed he hadn't explained this to his mother. Given Lucas being smart, there must be some reason he hadn't explained things, suggesting he had an ulterior motive. Unable to tell her the truth, I just said, I'll check our budget book when I get home and let you know. She didn't seem satisfied but didn't press further and turned her attention back to the TV. At home, I was stressed. It would be best to discuss the request for increased financial support with Lucas, who actually managed our finances. However, Lucas never showed me his pay stubs, and we were already giving his mother more than enough money. It was clear to me that increasing the amount would be difficult. If I told her that, she would likely berate me thoroughly. You're a terrible daughter-in-law for lying about Lucas managing the money and not increasing the amount for me, I could already hear it. So, I decided not to consult Lucas and resolved to cover the increased amount from my own income. When I told my mother-in-law we could increase the amount, she clapped her hands in joy. I'm so happy. A good son is truly a blessing. Could I get an extra $270 then? I'm going on a trip with friends next weekend. Everyone's been working hard, so they booked a really nice hotel. I couldn't be the only one to say I had to stay somewhere cheaper. This helps a lot. She extended her hands towards me with a smile I had never seen before. A trip, huh? Lucas and I haven't been on one since our honeymoon because of his work. Even though I was cursing inside, I went through with the amount she asked for and gave it to her. After that, she started coming to our house whenever she wanted more money. You know, I've always wondered, but isn't the cleaning of the entrance a bit sloppy? It'd be embarrassing for Lucas if guests come over. A wife should always live for her husband's sake. Even the shirts hanging out to dry are wrinkled, and the floors are dusty. What do you do all day, staying at home, sitting on this sofa, sipping coffee? Her words didn't seem like those of someone who had come to ask for money. She would pick on me, how the house is imperfect, and sometimes ask for lunch, and she always came to collect money with the monthly total almost matching what we had initially agreed on for support. Occasionally, my mother-in-law would bring over some side dishes, and Lucas was always happy about it. My mom has started coming over recently, Olivia. You'll have to work harder on the household chores, so it's not embarrassing, I couldn't help feeling irritated as Lucas spoke, with his smile shoving the side dishes into his mouth. The chores that Lucas used to help with are now completely left to me as he has become busier. You're home, so you should be able to handle it, he would say, but I'm not skilled enough to perfectly manage both work and household chores. On top of that, I'm grateful to have a lot of work coming in, working tirelessly day and night, letting out screams of joy. Amidst this, 
I had to deal with my mother-in-law, who comes over once a week to complain about the chores while lounging, prepare balanced meals and lunches for Lucas, who only comes home to sleep, and do the cleaning and laundry. Moreover, a significant portion of the money I earn goes to my mother-in-law. Lucas has even started to nag me about keeping the house in order, now that his mom is coming over, something he never did before. All these things piling up brought me to my breaking point. One day, as usual, my mother-in-law came over to extort money. Really, the laundry isn't hung properly again. Oh right, can you prepare $1,350 today? It's my friend's birthday. She loves brand names, so I thought I'd buy her the latest bag. I'm going to the department store, so I need some fashionable clothes to wear. Can you get it ready quickly? I stopped making coffee for her. That month, I had already given her the regular $900 and an additional $900 from my income, with half a month still to go until the next allowance. The idea of giving her another $1,350 for a friend's present was beyond what I could ignore. I'm sorry, but $1,350 is just too much. Can you perhaps delay giving the present? The moment she heard that, her face turned red, and she stood up angrily. What? You become happy about getting a birthday present because it is given on the day, and you're telling me to delay it? Unbelievable. I'm ashamed to think you're my daughter-in-law, saying so, she stormed out, bumping into me holding a tray at the entrance to the living room. I lost my balance from the impact, dropping the cup on the tray and falling over. Looking at the shattered cup, I muttered, this is it. The cup, now irreparably broken, was ironically bought during our honeymoon. Unable to bring myself to clean it up and unable to focus on work, I sat dazed in the living room. Hey Olivia, are you there? Lucas seemed to have come home, making a lot of noise. Startled, I looked outside and realized it had gotten dark. Lucas opened the living room door, saw the broken cup, and then glared at me. We're getting a divorce. You've been stealing the money I've been giving every month for the allowance, grabbing me by the collar, he suddenly declared a divorce, his eyes bloodshot with anger. What do you mean by this? I trusted you with the money, and you haven't given a single penny to my mom until today. I just went to her place after she told me to stop by on my way home from work. I never thought you'd be such a person. We're getting a divorce. Lucas shook me violently as he held onto my collar, yet in that moment, something in me snapped, a clarity. My mother-in-law, who had taken so much money yet lied about receiving none, Lucas, who only listened to my mother-in-law's side of the story and continued to blame me without hearing me out, was doused in sweet perfume. In that moment, I decided to let go of everything, feeling something burst within me, I pulled his hand off and swung towards the floor. Lucas lost his balance and fell to the floor, seemingly unable to react to the sudden movement. All right, let's get a divorce then, I said, and went to my office room to pack my equipment, laptop, a few clothes, and my bank book into a suitcase, and left the room. When I went to the living room, Lucas was still sitting on the floor. Thank you for everything up to now. Please send the divorce papers to my parents' house. We have nothing more to talk about, then I left the house. Lucas's loud voice could be heard from behind, but it no longer mattered to me. Up until the moment he grabbed me, I loved him, but my feelings cooled instantly. It's not an exaggeration to say I realized too late. When I arrived at my parents' house and opened the door, my parents were having dinner and welcomed me, though surprised. Once I explained the situation, they agreed, then divorce is the only option. A few days later, Lucas made no contact, but a fill-out divorce form and a letter with only one sentence arrived, I won't divide any assets. Thinking that was fine, I signed my name in my section and submitted it to the office, and my three-year marriage with Lucas, a month later, my mental state gradually stabilized, and I was able to return to working at my usual pace. One day, out of the blue, Lucas kept calling me over and over. I intended to ignore him, but I mistakenly hit the answer button. Olivia, what is this about? 
There's no way I can pay this amount with my salary alone. I couldn't help but let out a laugh at the pitiful tone in his voice, something I never heard before. Well, of course. Did you really think $900 a month was enough to cover the living expenses for two adults? This shortfall was coming out of my income after all. You have credit card bills nearly $1,800 every month, we were short from the start. The credit card expenses reach $1,800 around this same time we started giving money to my mother-in-law, probably that's when Lucas's affair began too, despite claiming to work late every day. Lucas always carried the scent of this same perfume. It was obvious he was cheating, yet I stayed because of some pride that he would come back to me, so I silently covered the shortfall from the living expenses he gave and managed the extra money from my mother-in-law. But now that we're divorced, none of this concerns me anymore. What am I supposed to do? Mom seems to have gotten hooked on guys working at a nightclub, and those have considerable outstanding bills. They're asking for a lump sum payment. Help me out, so that was why she needed so much money every month. In hindsight, I realized my mother-in-law's outfits had become flashier. We're divorced, so it's none of my business. Why don't you figure it out yourself? After all, you're the one who made a fuss about getting a divorce without listening to me, and your mother who led you on is just as guilty. Why don't the two of you go through hell? Saying that, I hung up without listening to his ranting any further. I then set both Lucas and my mother-in-law to block on my phone and did the same on my parents' phones. Later, Iris informed me about my mother-in-law and Lucas. Apparently, after that, she was fired on the spot for her asking her co-workers, which the manager reported. At the time, she begged to have her job back, claiming, my son got fired from his company. How are we supposed to live if I get fired too? But the refusal from her co-workers, who she had harassed all this time, was strong and her pleas were ultimately denied. He got fired because his affair got exposed. Poor guy, betrayed by everyone, she said. Iris reported with a tone that could barely contain her amusement. Hearing that, I couldn't help but burst into laughter. Lucas's affair partner turned out to be a married woman. Moreover, her husband was a client of mine, so I had mentioned to him I heard from an acquaintance that your wife might be suffering from stalking at her workplace. How it led to Lucas's dismissal is unknown, but likely, the affair partner, worried about the stalking allegation, used it to her advantage and reported the damage to the company. With outstanding bills to hosts, both my mother-in-law and Lucas have lost their jobs and are probably forced to live a frugal life now. They should realize just how recklessly they've been spending money. I've moved out and am now living in the countryside. Fortunately, my work can be done from anywhere, so I can continue using conference apps and work amidst this tranquil life. I'm healing from the wounds inflicted by my mother-in-law and enjoying life as I please. While I'm not yet thinking about remarriage, if a good opportunity comes, I'd like to marry someone who understands my work. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.